greatest dive watch in the world. Yes, this video title is highly subjective and definitely somewhat clickbait-like, but it is meant to be thought-provoking. It is meant to be engaging. And I hope that you have an opinion on this topic, and I hope that you share it below. Now, in this video, I will showcase this gorgeous titanium 50 fathoms from Blancpain while also sharing my take or a take on this topic, one that, although it's subjective, has some validity to it. And I think that the proper answer to the question, greatest dive watch in the world, it has to be more than a simple yes or no. Now, before my reasoning, a quick shout out to Exquisite Timepieces. They are a huge supporter of my channel. They have lent this Blanc Pawn in for review, and I want to recommend them as a great authorized dealer to do business with, and a link to this family-owned brick-and-mortar authorized dealer is listed below. Now, in my opinion, a truly great dive watch must do three things very, very well. And these three things are a lot more than just having good specifications that, depending on the retail price, will make or break the term value for money or any particular diver. No, a truly great dive watch can be a spec monster, but not all spec monsters are truly great dive watches. Now, the first thing that a greatest dive watch in the world absolutely needs is a strong design. And this will encompass capability as well as the ability to age well over the decades. A strong design doesn't feel out of place over time. It pleases the wearer by being attractive while also performing the duties of a diver well. The second thing that the greatest dive watch in the world needs, it might upset some of you, but it is history. Every brand will start somewhere, so I'm not trying to knock a relatively new brand, but there is some added weight to a design that has been successful for a very long period of time. I think history is important to a lot of us watch collectors, and that can be said for me. Now, the last thing that the greatest dive watch in the world needs is that it factor. The first two aspects that I mentioned are pretty logical, but this last and arguably most important factor is very emotional. The wearer must connect with the watch. It needs to incite positive emotion, and this is easier said than done. Now, how does this new titanium Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms stack up? Let's break it down point by point. Number one, design. This design has remained largely unchanged since its debut in 1953. So I think that Blanc Pond got it right the first time and has only found necessity to refine and upgrade the watch slowly over the years and not drastically redesign every decade or two like Omega has with the Seamaster. This design is nearly all based on function. The 45 millimeter case is meant to be large and legible for use underwater. The hands are likewise high contrast, very long, very legible. The applied markers reflect light well, and I think are easy to locate in low light conditions. The date wheel is color matched to the dial and will be hidden between the four and the five o'clock markers. This bezel is fully loomed and carries the most pleasant, rock solid, quiet action. Absolutely zero backplay, zero issues. Uh, and that's always an important thing, a satisfying element for a dive watch lover. And this one has a fantastic bezel action. The crown has large knurling for ease of use. It is also protected with crown guards that when threaded down, will protect the signed crown. 300 meters of water resistance is about 270 more than I realistically will ever need at the most. Now, this design has one negative aspect, which I will cover near the end of this video, but on to the second must, and that is history. This watch definitely has it. This was the world's first commercially available dive watch with a rotating elapsed timer bezel. It debuted 70 years ago this year, and I think that is so appealing. It is not often that one could say when they are wearing a watch that they are wearing a modern version of the world's first dive watch, and I'm sure that Rolex wishes that they could use that in the marketing of their own very venerable diver, the Submariner. Now on to the last important must the it factor, the emotion, the excitement. I think that this watch has it in spades. The details are so crisp. Note the faint concentric circle texturing on the dial, as well as the grain of the blue sun ray, the light play, the fact that this has no aged loom or fotina, no proclamations of uh, movement certifications or being automatic winding. It's just classy all the way through. 
which I think is hard to accomplish for a large, toolish timepiece. This one has the finesse, this one has the beauty, and this one definitely has that feeling of being a top-level luxury watch, and I think that is evidenced by this large in-house movement. This is the 1315 caliber. It will have 227 different components, including a free-sprung balance, a silicon balance spring, a black-coated 18-karat gold winding rotor, three different barrels, and 35 different jewels. The finishing is incredible. Note the mirror unglossed the spiral brushing, the black polishing. It really is a work of mechanical art. It will have a five-day or 120-hour power reserve and will be regulated to six different positions. This is anti-magnetic and fills the inner space of this large watch with grace, with proportion. It doesn't look too small, which is an oft-overlooked detail with some brands with large watches. I think that this is a joy to view through a sapphire display case back. Now the bracelet is likewise top quality. Note the tight tolerances, the sharp finishing of the grade 5 titanium. There will be areas in between the center links that will allow the wrist to ventilate while being worn, and I think that is important. The only real disappointing thing, in fact, the only real drawback in my eyes to this piece is the lack of a traditional dive clasp with a modern quick adjustment system. This has a well-executed butterfly signed deployant buckle, but I, again, I think it is the only area that Blancpain needs to improve on. And some will find this a deal breaker, I don't think it is the end of the world. I think us watch fans can get a tad dramatic at times. But personally, I am hoping that they release a new clasp soon. And then at that point, I will have no excuse to not add my favorite 50 Fathoms, which would be a black dial, black bezel, on bracelet. Now, having owned most of the major luxury dive watch players, as well as having reviewed many that I have not personally owned, I can confidently say that this Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms makes a strong case for world's greatest dive watch. I don't think it is at this point. Perhaps it can't fully capture that title until a new clasp is engineered, but even without that, I think this is hard to beat in terms of design, in terms of history, in terms of X factor. So let me know what you think of this watch and let me know what you think the world's greatest dive watch is right now, as well as the qualifying elements or sentiments that I expressed in this video. Remember, if you are shopping Blanc Pond, please check out my friends at Exquisite Timepieces. All links are below. Thanks for watching.